Hi, my name's Bob Greenier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, so if you were in any doubt that the work of John Hutchison was related to Tesla, I am going to try and clear that up for you. I'm also going to uh, try and clear it up for you that um, they are connected because of the research into fusion, uh, i.e. making um, hydrogen work for us in terms of energy. So this is John Hutchison, uh, if you don't know what he looks like, and this is a, one of his classic samples um, where the material has been disrupted. And I have brought up this article from 1956, this is 12th of December 1956, that was published in the New York Times, and it says, Physicist creates a uh, universe in a test tube. Very bold claim. Um, see? Bold claim. Uh, and it says, out of a small glass chamber devised to study means for taming the explosive energy of the hydrogen bomb for peaceful uses has come a new vision of creation. It offers for the first time experimental evidence of the possible origin of the infinite universe of stars and galaxies. And so... What they did was had a little electric gun. I've described this on other videos on our channel and linked to uh, papers that were presented by Bostick and also Bostick and Nardi later. This was done on in major national labs in the US, and that is the stated reason. Uh, so, the work was first done at the Livermore Laboratory uh, uh, at the University of California in the course of work on Project Sherwood, a project of the Atomic Energy Commission for converting the energy of the hydrogen bomb into controlled electrical power. The work is being carried out in three major centres, including Princeton University and the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory at Los Alamos, New Mexico. The studies recently declassified were outlined yesterday at a meeting of the American Nuclear Society at Washington by Dr. Winston Bostick. Now, because this was declassified at this time, um, uh, and you, you can see the likelihood that, that after the uh, Manhattan Project that they went straight on to try and find out if they can make it do something useful, um, uh, th this is uh, published here. So there's a couple of points in here that don't quite come out of um, uh, the papers that are presented around this time. Dr. Bostick's studies further suggest that all matter... Uh, first ma uh, made its appearance in the form of hydrogen ions, namely protons, fundamental particles of matter carrying a unit of positive electricity accompanied by electrons, fundamental units carrying an equal unit of negative electrical charge. Dr. Bostick's investigations indicate, he said, that the repelling force is magnetic in origin. The miniature galaxies are formed by using a plasma gun, a device designed by Dr. Bostick. The gun, about the size of an eraser at the end of a lead pencil, consists of two tiny wires embedded in a ceramic base, with the ends of the wires flush with the face of the base. An electric arc is formed between the ends of the wires by forcing through, uh, uh, through them in one half millionth of a second an electric current as high as 10,000 amperes. The wires of the special composition are made of titanium metal with heavy hydrogen gas, deuterium, absorbed or occluded in it. Occluded is interesting. This is the word that was used by Thomas Graham, FRS, uh, in the 18. Uh, 76, I think it was, his paper, um, when he was looking at the occlusion of uh, uh, hydrogen in metals, and he defined almost the maximum you could occlude in hydrogen-absorbing absor metals in, in palladium. Due to the tremendous current density uh, in the arc, the tips of the wires are heated to temperatures high enough to vaporize and, uh, and ionize, electrify both the titanium and the deuterium. Titanium and deuterium ions, particles of ca matter carrying positive charges, Accompanied by electrons, particles carrying negative charges are held from the gun at speeds of 20,000 centimetres a second, equivalent to 450,000 miles per hour. This, it was pointed out, is the highest speed that matter of such density, amounting, uh, uh, amounting to a veritable river of atoms, has ever been attained on Earth. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, it then goes on to say, one of the many ramifications of Do Dr. Bostick's picture of galactic evolution arises out of his belief that gravitational energy generated in the process is transformed into magnetic energy. The accumulation of such energy, he believes, may lead to the formation of an ever-growing magnetic field around a galaxy. As the strength of this field increases, it may give rise to forces that bring about the continuing expansion of the universe. It may be, Dr. Bostick said, that these magnetic fields repel the magnetic fields surrounding other galaxies which are in the process of formation. Thus, for the first time, we can begin to understand the mechanism that brings, the uh, brings on the expanding of the well-documented expanding universe. Okay, so... Uh, I do agree, uh, and um, I think what you need to do is go to the Kickstarter introduction video on our YouTube channel for the uh, Space Earth Human book uh, that we translated last year of Dr. Alexander Parkamov, and look at the QR codes uh, for uh, five papers that I have in the start of that video. If you want to start getting ahead of where I'm going to be uh, going with these presentations, but... Um, uh, I think there's some nice intuition going on here, uh, whether it's intuition or it's actually based on uh, hard uh, I, uh, data. But he's saying his belief that gravitational energy generated in the process is transformed in, into magnetic energy. Okay, now the reason I'm reading this for Bostick uh, is uh, essentially when uh, uh, John Hutchison uh, came onto the scene in, in 1979... Um, Ken Shoulders was brought in because he was an expert in plasma physics uh, uh, and making little plasma things. And um, why was he asked to do this? Well, what you need to know is that uh, Ken Shoulders said that his starting point for replicating John Hutchison was the work of Winston Bostick in these... Um, uh, plasmoids that he was investigating. And so we have a direct connection between what is claimed is the fusion that goes on in the sun and research done at major US national laboratories and the production of charge clusters and John Hutchison and the Hutchison effect. Moreover, if I go here and I'll just show you, you can get this article on the Times uh, New, um, news uh, site and you can download it um, however and um, moreover in the lion reactor I shared this uh, on the 4th of October 2018 um, uh, on the surface of the outer uh, part of the reactor there was a three-point type galaxy here in between this structure the cannon that I talked about in one of the videos in this series and this two-point structure and as you can see the the rotation here is this way and we've got a hole and on this one it's that way and we've got a lump this is very important this is telling you what the structure is that's doing this but this is a two-arm spiral galaxy this is a three-arm spiral galaxy and then looking further down the core we have uh, this being a four point and you can go and download the PDFs and look at these in detail This is a four point and this is a five point and here is uh, an image of um, a couple of the so-called elements that it detected Overlaid and you can see the the five point nature of it and the what I call the yin yangs Which I'll come on to later. This is very very important the yin yangs and the paisley. This is very very important um, so um, what you are seeing here, it's very interesting because I don't think these elements are actually hafnium and ytterbium. What I uh, uh, think is going on here is that the copper uh, has exotic vacuum objects in there and it's able to, when the electron beam comes in from the uh, uh, electron scanning electron microscope and it's supposed to excite the electrons in the copper uh, or the oxygen and make it come back with a, a characteristic X-ray, uh, or, you know, a photon, like some photon that would describe uh, based um, uh, on the characteristic X-rays of these atoms. It doesn't. It actually reports something else. And in fact, <laughs> we found that it, it wasn't even really either of these elements. It was often you find with Lena 
experiments, it, it would appear that the software is struggling to determine what element it is. And I believe that is because uh, the exotic vacuum objects are in the material. So <laughs> this is just a shadow that's caused by the fact that the exotic vacuum objects are stuck here. And they really are stuck. So just like I said with the Hutchison sample, when the EVU came in and it hit the material, it went and it got stuck there and it was just sitting there doing its thing. Here, these are kind of basically stuck. And even months later, when we're looking at this in the SEM, uh, it's affecting the electron beam. Um, and so that's a, a point here. So the, the, other, the other point is, is that if you think about it, um, these structures, you had to have some, you know, a lot of funding, a lot of equipment, and uh, to fire these in and these incredible cameras and so forth to create all these different uh, structures. So you might look, this is, say, the Ring Nebula in Lyra, and these are kind of like um, other kind of uh, uh, structures you would see in the heavens if you looked very closely. Um, in, the, in the case of the Lion Reactor, with what you're seeing here and you're seeing here, there was no plasma guns involved. And these structures that you're seeing here were left as solid uh, uh, evidence in the frozen uh, so, uh, condensed matter of the reactor afterwards. So um, now, as a, as a close out here, I just want to add that around this same time, and this would be fun for, for people who are interested in this sort of thing, um, that uh, Winston Bostick uh, had something else to say. Now, I, I will include all of these links in this video, but this is another site called Plasma Universe, and it actually includes the, uh, uh, the, the newspaper clipping I've already read and transcribed, uh, 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 or rather just uh, read to you. Um, but down here, we have, this is actually Winston uh, Bostick here. Um, but down here, at the same time, actually around the same time, it was in uh, the 31st of January, 1958, uh, he says this, <laughs> uh, space flight motors, he says two and a half million miles per hour motor described by scientists, New York, space flight motors reaching speeds of 700 miles a second, two and a half million miles per hour were described Wednesday to the Ast American Astronomical Society. They don't exist yet, but they should be a, uh, possible, said uh, Dr. Winston H. Bostick, professor of physics at Stephen Institute of Technology. They would be plasma motors. In this case, plasma means a cold of, uh, cloud of uh, ionized or electrically charged gas. The idea is, uh, to pul uh, is to use pulses of electric current and magnetism to get the gas particles moving at fantastic speeds. Then they could be shot out of the motor. So it's kind of like talking about an iron drive. So he's almost t taking on the, the uh, learning that he did from uh, this. But I just thought that might be interesting for the people that are in uh, to the kind of propulsion side of things. things. And you can read that uh, in your own time. So in summary, um, Winston Bostick did this work following the detonation of uh, those things. Uh, and uh, he, 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 the purpose of it at several national laboratories was to produce uh, uh, energy. Uh, using the hydrogen fusion. Uh, he was using deuterium. And uh, when John Hutchison came onto the scene, Ken Shoulders was brought in to find out how this worked. And he started with the work of Bostic. Now, did the labs that were looking at um, the work of, uh, uh, that, that were doing the work with Bostic, these four, four different institutions, had they already observed these kind of effects, which meant that they that they would be able to say to Kerr, hey, hey, look, this is a good starting point for you if you want to investigate what's going on. Um, and so here, here we have, we've, we've connected uh, low energy nuclear reactions with Bostic, uh, with John Hutchison, and with the US nuclear fusion program. So thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video.